Howdy folks, uh, happy Motorhome Monday. My name is Zach Jakes. I will be showing the 2020 Coach Memorata, the 29FW. Uh, before we get started, I'm sure most of you know that the model number doesn't always reflect, doesn't reflect the actual total length. It is 30 foot 7 inches from the very front to the very back and it is 12 feet 5 inches in height to the top of the air conditioner. So those are the maximum length height to the unit. Um, the great coach, just while we start off, I'm going to go around the outside, uh, show you all those features, do a loop on the inside, and we're also going out for a test drive today. Um, being the length that it is, it's going to fit uh, state parks, national parks, anywhere you need to go and give you a lot of space in, in the Class A. Uh, why don't we start out right up in the front. The first thing that's important to notice on all the Maradas is the, it has partial paint, meaning that the top and bottom edges are real paint, automotive style, that never fully hardened. They stay soft, malleable, so that going down the road it can flex and not dry crack. Um, so that is on both of the corners, you have the partial paint. Um, you'll notice here, side view cameras on both sides. When you are driving down the road, when you flip your blinker on one way or the other, you'll have a nice view on a screen. Um, exactly where the side of your coach is. It makes turning a lot easier. Um, moving on down, start off at the top. It's a 20 foot awning on a 29 foot box, so a huge awning for the size of the coach. Um, and as you can see, it covers up the entry door and the outside kitchen. So on a day like today where it's raining out, this is set up nicely. Uh, you can still use things under the cover of your awning. Frameless windows, again, a great day to be showing this because frameless windows open up from the bottom, they're hinged at the top, which means you can have this open on a rainy day, nothing's going to get inside. Uh, they also do not have the seal exposed like you'd see on the standard sliding windows, uh, which helps them uh, last longer during the, the, the summertime, the seal is not drying up and falling apart on you. Um, here, solar charge port. See this in a lot of the newer coaches. What this is going to do for you is when you aren't using it or if you are dry camping and don't want to have your generator running, you'll be able to buy a standalone panel, plug it into here. Once you have it set up, it's pretty much going to work as a strong trickle charge for your coach. Um, it's not doing things like run the microwave or the air conditioners. It will keep your battery charged and support you know, having lights on um, and, and some basic dry camping functions. Um, this is a really great feature. Not only is it a big storage compartment, but if you kind of come down and look through here, you have full pass-through storage, which you do not see on all gas coaches. Uh, it gives you the ability to, you know, lawn chairs, skis, any skinny long things that wouldn't fit this way, you can push through to the other side, and there is another pass-through storage spot on this coach. Um, as I close these doors, Notice that there is no clips on the majority of them. They're slam latch doors, easy to open and close. You don't have to fiddle around with plastic clips or metal clips that you know break from time to time. Um, right here, outlets again underneath the awning. Great for whatever you're going to use it for. Uh, could be appliances, plug into your Kindle to read underneath the awning, or whatever uh, you could think of. You also have outside entertainment. Um, again, just a, a nice feature, and again, underneath the awning. Um, on that note, you'll notice that there is not two circles, you know, two, two outside speakers punched into the side of the coach. That's because they are built into the awning. Uh, it is here and there, so you do have two outside speakers. They are just not the, the typical ones you see. Two, it gets rid of the two holes uh, that you typically see on the side of the coach and instead puts them right into the awning. Here you can see your propane tank. Um, it's a huge tank. It's going to be in the 100 pound range. You really aren't going to have to fill it up much. It's something at Colton RV we fill up for you. Um, so just turning it on and off here and other than that, uh, not too much to it. Coming on down. Here's a great feature that you don't see on typically on, on many gas Class A coaches, especially one in this length, the nice short length that this is. Um, you're going to have a propane quick connect, 
So that's already regulated, uh, ready to go for your RV grill. Um, you have your 12 volt fridge. That runs off of just when you're plugged in. So that's an electric only, it's not propane electric like, like the fridge on the inside, so keep that in mind. Um, this is gonna be one that automatically turns on when you are plugged into power. Uh, as well as you can see your sink. This is the drain pump switch. So there's actually a pump when you're using that sink, you, you, you flip uh, the switch there and it will draw that down into your gray tank instead of a gravity fed system. So it makes it a lot easier to use. Um, as well as you can see you have some storage out here as well. You get a close shot of this, this is pretty cool on all the Coach from Murata product. You'll have the soft close feature. So uh, not only you know, does it make it easier to close, but traveling down the road when you're making a, a turn, it, it makes sure that your cabinets aren't opening up on you, um, which is it's huge. Here you have the other pass-through storage I was talking about, a great place to put a portable grill. Um, also, you can see the ladder for the front bunk on the inside. Fits nicely, it's a great place to store it right there. Um, we'll get to the front bunk when we do the inside of the coach. That's where it's stored currently. Um, and again, it's a great place for storage. There's a lot of storage on this 29-foot coach. Moving around the back. Ladder. Already installed, it's a pebble green fiberglass roof, not a rubber roof, not a TPO roof. Uh, it isn't something that you need to repaint or recaulk. It is, again, fiberglass. Uh, you do want to check once or twice a year just to make sure that there's no, you know, you haven't hit a tree. Um, and the seal around the air conditioners, around the vent covers is still solid. Other than that, uh, not too much maintenance will go into a fiberglass roof. I'll set up the tow. Class 3 hitch, it's a 5,000 pound hitch with a 500 pound to uh, tongue weight. Uh, so whether you're towing something or just want an extra storage rack, uh, it works great. As well as your 7 way plug right here. So it is all ready to go uh, as far as towing goes. That will operate the lights, brakes, uh, and everything else as you tow either a trailer or a flat tow behind you. It's a full wall slide on this coach. It's in right now. It's easier to get to the outside storage compartments when the slide room is in. That's why I have it set up this way. Uh, first, you'll notice a 50 amp power cord, and that is because this has two air conditioners built in, uh, which is a really nice, being again a 30 foot coach, having two air conditioners is going to allow you to really travel to a lot of different climates and stay comfortable. This box right here is an automatic transfer box. Uh, what that's going to allow you to do is not have to plug this cord into a receptacle in the unit. As soon as the generator fires up, it'll automatically transfer power over to that source. So it's, again, it's just an easier process. You press the button, it fires up, transfers over to running off the generator. Down there you'll see your exhaust for that generator. And it is a 5500. Um, it's the bigger, typical is 4000. You have 5,500 um, Cummins Onan generator, and the fuel source on this is directly off of the same um, tank that the engine does. So it's a gas generator. There's not multiple fill-up spots. You fill up in one spot, and you're good to go. Back of your fridge, back of your freezer. Not really doing too much with these. Just taking them off maybe once a year to, to blow some compressed air in there, and make sure that too much dust isn't building up, um, and it stays clean. Um, a really nice feature right here is your furnace exhaust and your hot water tank. Really nice feature. These are on the non-camping side. So you could have your picnic table set up, chairs on the, you know, underneath the awning. And these aren't blowing hot air on that side. So it's a really nice design to have them on the non-camping side of the coach. Uh, you can see here your wet bay. Again, it's nice to have it all in one area, all in one um, compartment instead of having multiple holes punched down the side of the coach. What you have here, I'll kind of go through it. <clears throat> First and foremost, you have your dump for your black and your gray tank, color coordinated. Um, how it works, this cap comes off. This unscrews. And you take a 90 degree adapter, hook it up, it drops right down and through. That way you can have uh, hoses hooked up without leaving this open, as well as here is another access port. So you can have your fresh water hose go to the city water connection, um, and again, keep this closed 
so it's not open all the time uh, when you're out hooked up and camping. Um, right here you have your cable input. So at the campground, if they offer cable, it would hook up to here, go directly uh, to the TVs that this coach has. Your water filter, so it's winterized right now, that's what that liquid is, but a filter would go in there and, and, and that'll filter water coming through the city water connection up into your coach. Uh, think of it as like a Brita. Um, outside shower, that's different for everybody, but what it pretty much is, is it's a rinse off station, an outside water source, uh, separate from your sink up there, where you know it's rinsing off the pets, cleaning the fish. It's different to everybody, but you do have the outside uh, shower source. This is that city water connection, so it's where you hook up your hose at the campground. Uh, runs everything off of um, that campground's water pressure. You don't have to worry about your water pump. Uh, again, that's your city hose hookup. And then your black tank flush. So on this one, when you dump your black tank, which your black tank is for your toilet, your gray tank is for your shower and sinks. When you dump your black tank, to rinse that out, you don't have to dump buckets of water down the toilet or you know stick a hose through a window down the toilet. You hook it right up to here. It'll rinse out that black tank, help clean it out, keep uh, keep the sensors functioning as they should, and uh, keep the smell down. Hopefully. The other side of that pass-through storage. Again, hot water tank here. Um, nothing manual to this. Everything on the coach is just flipping a switch or pressing a button from the inside. Um, propane and electric runs off of both and it is a nylon plug um, to put in and take out instead of the big metal anode rod. If you've seen those before, um, the older hot water tanks used to have um, pretty much metal rods that would take the rust and you'd have to replace it once every year or so. Uh, it's a different type of tank now, it's not going to rust, that's why you only need this nylon plug. It's really nice feature. This is not a storage compartment. Uh, in this box is hydraulics uh, for your auto leveling system that we'll get to on the inside. Uh, shouldn't really ever need to, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, do anything with this. Uh, and, and if you did, it would be the service department that helped me out. Again, your other side view camera, and it is a four Triton V10, it's a F53 uh, chassis, it's 8,000 pound chassis. Um, so again, a V10, which you'll see in the test drive, provides us with pl plenty of pickup. Um, you know, keep in mind, this is the same engine that they put in 37, 38 foot gas coaches that weigh a lot more. So on something this size, it uh, really gives you a lot of get up and go when you need it. Let's head in. So I'm going to start off by opening up the slide room. Um, there is a few steps that you need to do that I already have done. First is engage your emergency brake up front. Uh, besides that, just make sure that you are plugged in um, to power or have your generator running. It is an electric slide system and the main issue causing uh, failures on an electric slide system is running on low voltage. Um, so as long as you are plugged in um, or have your generator running, you should not have very many of those issues. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Another important trick to remember is hold out until it stops moving, until you, until you don't hear any more noise. Uh, you don't want to let off too soon, because what that can do is cause one side to be out or in a little bit further than the other, and then when you go to bring it back in, one side's starting earlier and over time it can get it, um, can get it cockeyed, so what you want to do is just make sure that you're out until it's all the way out and in until it's all the way in. Um, why don't we start right up front here? I sneak by. Um, you have your awning control on the left side here, and this front bunk control is over on the right. There are two safety pins which I've removed that we'll put in when we go for the test drive that you need to take out beforehand. <clears throat> but once you do that, simply hold down. And 
you have a front bunk. <clears throat> 300 pound weight capacity here. Um, the nice thing is, is that if you do have, you know, guest with you, you don't need to break down this table. You can leave the table as is. Um, again, that ladder on the outside hooks right up to here, <clears throat> and you have a bed up in the front. I'm gonna go ahead and raise that back up and talk to you about the cockpit area. As a side note, if you're thinking, well, I'm not, it's just going to be the two of us, or I'm going to be by myself, I don't need the front bunk, it's kind of a waste of space, you can actually take that mattress out, and when you bring that down, it can be a safe, it can be extra storage, where you put stuff in it, raise it up to the top, um, up out of the way, so it can be used as an extra storage spot. Um, both of the chairs here swivel around, um, so you do have an extra seating area, uh, again, for company if you need it. Um, I'm going to swivel this back around. You also have, as we work our way back, theater seating, recliners, um, which is a really nice feature. It's, it's becoming more and more popular. Um, these are going to be comfortable. They recline back, um, and they're kind of across from the uh, TV area, which is on a pivot. So this will pull out, swing around, so you kind of have a good view and don't have to crank your head. Uh, very hard to see. Uh, storage underneath. If you want to come up and take a peek at that. Instead of having to take the cushions off or move a board to get to the under dinette storage, they slide right out, uh, which is very nice. <clears throat> and underneath, if you'll notice, we uh, shot there. There is no metal posts or pegs to bang your knees on um, that make it difficult to raise and lower this into a sleeping position. There is a gas strut in the back that operates raising and lowering and locks it in place. Um, and again, a lot more knee space doing it that way versus having the posts underneath. Uh, in the kitchen area here, you'll notice, again, lots of storage. Uh, real tile backsplash and solid surface countertops. Again, all soft clothes, and even a place for a small garbage can or just extra storage if you need. And again, every single one of these will have that soft clothes feature. It really is uh, very useful. Um, the microwave doubles as a convection microwave oven. It is residential size. Um, it's unique. This is again unique that you have both. A lot of the newer units are getting rid of your propane oven. And just giving you that, this you have both options. So you still have your propane oven and a convection, as well as a glass stove cover, not the sheet metal that bounces around uh, and causes a racket. Um, this also functions as kind of a secondary uh, backsplash. Moving on over, fridge, propane electric. Um, you can set it to be auto, meaning it will always draw off of where you're plugged in. If you're plugged into power, it runs off of that. If for whatever reason you became disconnected, um, you started hitting the road, it will automatically transfer over uh, to the propane setting and, and keep operating that way. Um, a few things that are in here. This is that filter I was talking about. So this is what goes to the outside, um, filters all the water coming into the coach, as well as a winterizing tube and a whole bunch of remotes for all the different TVs, the radio, etc. cetera. Um, this is an eight cubic foot, so it's the bigger of the propane electric uh, two-door fridges that you can get. It's eight cubic foot instead of six. Uh, take a peek into the bathroom. You'll notice no curtain. Uh, it is a glass shower door. <clears throat> You're going to have a porcelain toilet instead of plastic. And a stainless sink, again, instead of plastic. Um, so this is going to hold up well, as well as you do have 
some extra storage and a chemical treatment for your black water for your black holding tank. Um, and that's that. Another nice feature here is there's magnets here and it's a pocket sliding door which gives you the ability to get to the bathroom with the slide room closed. So even with the slide room closed you can slide this open and get to the bathroom without having to pull over open up the slide room. Uh, it's a really nice feature of this coach is whether the slide is open or closed you can still get to everything uh, regardless. Um, over here we have a few different things. One as you can see here, you have the uh, thermostat. Um, so this is gonna have, like I said, two ACs. Oops, popped it off. Those are removable. Um, you have two ACs here. Uh, you have propane furnace in the floor, and you also do have an electric heat pump in the front AC, uh, which is a great feature. It means that you can, in, in chilly conditions, you can keep the unit warm without using your propane. Again, it's a heat pump up in the air conditioner. Um, over you have your master controls. So if you want to come in and get a look at this, I can kind of show <clears throat> slide room in and out. You have gen start and stop, um, Wi-Fi boost. This has a wine guard 2.0 um, Wi-Fi boost, which pretty much is going to pick up a campgrounds internet and boost it if you're farther away. I think it works up to a mile or a mile and a half of boosting signal. Um, it's a very nice system. You can make it function to give off internet as well, uh, such as like a hotspot. Um, you have water heater on gas and water heater on electric. So those are both the switches. Again, you're just flipping a switch, uh, as well as your water pump and your TV antenna um, or the park cable, so you can kind of toggle between where you're getting uh, your signal from. And then here you can see, this is where you test all of your uh, tanks. So you can see propane, we're two thirds full, batteries fully charged, fresh, empty, black, empty, gray, empty. If we did have a second or third gray, that is what this aux is standing for. Um, we do not on this coach, um, but that's what it would be. Um, moving towards the back here, again, pocket sliding doors that separate the bedroom. Oops, you can get in. Uh, another TV. You'll notice on this one, it is hinged, extra storage behind it, um, setting up a, a satellite receiver. Hanger space here. Heat pull out. Again, all with the soft touch. Zach, we got a question. Okay. David uh, would like to know, first of all, he called it a beautiful beast, and uh, he's wondering what the price is. Price is, um, finance price is $99,998. So you can say 100000 for this. Uh, list price is in the 140s. Um, so that is going to be the price. Uh, for fi and that is if you have finance with us. So you can say 100000 cool. And Keep the questions coming. So I've been here five and a half years. I was in the parts and service before I was in sales. So um, hopefully if you have any questions, I can answer them for you. Uh, other hangers. So you have two separate uh, spots, kind of closets in the bedroom for hanging clothes. More pullouts. And a king size bed. So this is a king. You're getting a, a king size bed again in a 29 footer. Um, easy to uh, get in and out of. Doesn't sit up too high, and it's also very easy to move around the side. It doesn't kind of cramp the bedroom space. You can still get to the corner without bending for uh, making the bed, putting sheets on, um, as well as you'll have outlets down here, nightstands. So you have out outlets and nightstands on both sides, as well as a USB charging station and a radio um, for the inside and outside speakers uh, right over there. CPAP station, so what this is, is inside here you can have your CPAP set up and tubes and everything running down, or again, you can set them on the nightstand, so it is uh, friendly for that. More hanging storage on both sides. You can see underneath here, this is the speakers um, in the bedroom, so you have three sets of speakers, 
speakers in the living room, speakers in the bedroom, as well as outside speakers uh, in the awning that I had talked about. Zach, is this a 2020 or 2019? 2020. Cool. 2020. Yep. Just so you can see the extra storage here. Take a peek at that. And then we're done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> as you can see, uh, what is underneath this is tanks. Um, your fresh water tank as well as some um, um, other plumbing. They didn't make it all a wasted space though. They put a cover. It is a thinner under the bed storage, but you still do have some under the bed storage here. And it's hold, held up by gas struts. So I don't need to you know, have one shoulder holding it up while I'm reaching for stuff. You can do it easily with one hand and then push it back down. Uh, safety wise, you do have an emergency exit window in the back. This is going to come standard with a fire extinguisher, propane, smoke detector, carbon dioxide, um, and again, your emergency exit window, um, which are all standards. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close up those. Close that one for me. This is a great uh, feature as well. You'll have true blackout day-night shades, roller shades, instead of that the, the, the metal ones that rattle around or the accordion style that still let a bunch of light in. Uh, these will be true blackout roller shades and that's on everything all the way around. Um, if you look up top here, this is the rear air conditioner. You can kind of point up towards the front and get that into the camera. That's the second. They are into the same ductwork. And a nice feature about this is, if you'll notice, you can open and close all of the ducts individually. Why that's important is, again, if you want just the, you know, if, if it's extremely hot out, you want just the bedroom being cooled, you can close off the living room ducts and push all of that air to the back. Um, really gives you the ability to keep whatever room cool uh, that, that you'd like. Or again, if you leave them all open, it's cooling the whole coach. Um, you also do have one in the uh, bath room as well. So you have three separate rooms with all the doors closed and each one of them gets heat as well as air conditioning. <clears throat> Swing around back up to the front. One thing I didn't point out right when I walked in are these switches down here. So if you can point down here for a second. <clears throat> these are lights right when you walk in. What you can do, just back it up, and you see the power steps coming out. But as you're walking into the coach, you'll have your entry light, light for the main hall, as well as your outside awning light and step light switches. Um, so you don't have to be fiddling around in the dark trying to find all the light switches on that main panel. You can turn these ones on right when you're walking in the coach. Um, and then you also have your battery disconnect, which is going to be the way to cut power uh, from your coach batteries um, when you're not using it. You just flip this switch, that cuts everything. Turn it back on. You want to have it engaged when you're plugged in because it'll um, it'll activate these batteries, put them into the into the electrical system, and keep them fully charged uh, while you're going. Um, hey, uh, anybody? We got, a, we got a question from Lincoln. Sounds good. Uh, yes, is the back a heat pump too? Nope, it is not. So just one heat pump. It is the front air conditioner. It is a 15,000 BTU with a heat pump. The rear AC 13. Uh, 13,500 BTU, and it is only the AC. Good question. All right. Um, lots of stuff to talk about up front. Question for you. Do we have a plate on the back, a dealer plate? Oh, that is a good question. We should, we should make sure of that before we start driving.
going south mode. All I'm doing now is making sure all the cabinets are closed, uh, doors are latch shut. That's what you want to do. Um, here you go. I'll take that. Sounds good? Cool. I'm going to go ahead and close the slide back up. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, it does get quite a bit tighter, but you still have a laneway to get through. And I see there's some questions coming in. Give me just one second. There's a laneway to get through to the bathroom. You can still get to the bed in the back. Um, again, it doesn't lose any functionality <clears throat> while you're driving. You just lose a little bit of space. Uh, can, you, can you use solar power? This is solar prepped. Um, this is solar prepped. So what that means is, is it's ready. <clears throat> it is ready for a plug and go panel. It is not equipped with solar panels on the roof as it is. Do the recliners become beds? Uh, they do not, no. They, they just recline. I will say from personal experience of using um, using uh, used units uh, at, at campgrounds, I'd pick sleeping on one of the recliners generally over a, a jackknife sofa. Uh, they are quite comfortable, but technically, they are not. Uh, they are not uh, a, a, another bed. So as we get started up front, there's a bunch of really nice features <clears throat> to talk about. The first thing is if you if you pan over to here. Your backup camera and side view cameras are separate from the radio, meaning you can have the camera running and, and still be able to adjust uh, your radio. It's not all in one. As well as you can see as someone's walking behind us, I have this set to stay on the entire time we're driving, uh, meaning you can have it set up to only come on in reverse, or you can leave it on like this. It'll show behind you. Uh, so if you're, if you're towing something behind you, um, or just to, to keep a good eye and again as soon as you hit the blinker now you see all down the side of your coach and it's a very responsive quick there's no delay to it as soon as I hit the blinker it's kicking over um, and again if I went to put it in reverse it would automatically pop up with the lines uh, and tell you you know exactly where you're at how much further back you have to go um, power heated mirrors controls are right over here for it so I'm going to adjust those for me. Same thing here. As well as up in the front, you have your auto leveling. Can I see the camera just for a second? Yeah. Just to point this out, you have your auto leveling uh, system. Very easy to use. Um, you just press on and then auto. And what that will do is it'll drop down all the jacks, get the coach completely level and then blink green in the middle. Um, when you are done, you press retract all, it'll bring them all back up. You can also manually, if you hit manual, you can adjust each jack individually if you want to. Uh, but again, uh, it's very straightforward just to hit auto for everything, it'll bring everything down get the coach completely level and then retract all will bring them all back up to a driving position um, if you see here you have two separate shades up in the front Thank you. that will only come down this far when the engines running that's a safety feature it'll allow you to keep the Sun out of your eyes but it won't uh, won't let it come all the way down to make it so you can't see where you're going as you're driving the coach and then you can see too you have the uh, day shade fans now these are not so much for you know keeping yourself cool as they are for defrosting the window um, you do have standard air conditioning and heat 
you know, just like you would in, uh, in um, your truck, in your own vehicle. Um, lights, controls, cruise control, everything up front here. You have radio switch. This is a very nice feature. It allows you to have the radio on or off, whether the key is on. Uh, some motorhomes you have to turn the engine on, turn the key. Um, to have the radio functioning, this, it's its own separate switch to turn it on and off. So you can be at the campground, flip the radio switch, it's going to turn the front radio on. Um, you have your fog lights, gen stop and start. So two, two separate places on the inside to do this. One here, one on that uh, panel in the middle that we had looked at as well as there's a, a third switch on the actual generator. Um, and then lastly, the auxiliary start. It's a very nice feature. If you are taking this across country, which a lot of my customers you know, are taking their Class A motorhomes uh, on long distance trips, say you pulled into you know, the Walmart parking lot just to spend the night and you accidentally left your headlights on. Um, and when you went to turn the key, you got nothing, you got a click. Uh, what you can do with this auxiliary start is draw off of the coach batteries, the house batteries underneath the steps to fire up the engine, which in turn the alternator would charge up the chassis battery and you'd be good to go. Um, so that's a knife, it's like a self jump, uh, it's a nice feature to have, um, and that is the auxiliary start. Other than that you'll see you have USBs here as well as here, um, and there's a 12 volt outlet here as well, and John if you pull that just to show and look at the back there there is more I believe one 12 volt and one USB uh, port as well and it's a workstation um, you can have your laptops whatever you think plugged in there uh, going down the road all right are you ready Good. let's go let's do it if you need the wipers All right, John, this is my first time, so hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, folks. Uh, that's an icebreaker I'll do when I start driving. Again, as I've talked about earlier, um, with the lightweight and the length of this, it's a, it's a lightweight coach, seven foot gas coach. driving in the rain, how would this handle in uh, snow? This will handle with no issue. It's dualies in the back. Um, you know, as long as you're on the road, <laughs> not in a field somewhere where you could sink in potentially, uh, you won't have issues uh, getting out of snow or getting traction in snow. Um, and again, the, the, the turning radius, one thing that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are scared when they see a Class A thinking that you know, that must be really tough to drive. Well, in reality, um, it's not so bad. Sure, you feel the wind a little bit more than you would in a Class C coach or, or, or in a smaller coach with less height, but you have a very tight turning radius. The wheels are kind of right underneath us, the, the front tires, um, and they have a sharper wheel cut, which means you can really swing the front end around um, without any issue. Um, easy to maneuver. I'll actually pull into this parking lot and kind of show you what I'm talking about so you can, you can see that. And I'll throw it into a space too. You'll notice you don't need to go into the left lane or get anybody's way. The front end really snaps around. And if we're going to park in a pull-through spot, we're in. I would get out and show you, but it's starting to rain pretty hard, so we're going to keep <laughs> on driving. <laughs> Actually, I'll do one more thing. I'm going to back up back up into this spot and show you just how well the backup camera does work.
put it in reverse. Automatically turns on. And now with nobody behind me, what I'll be able to do is get fairly snug to that. And again, at that point I'm within a foot. Uh, if you can see in the bottom mirrors how easy it is to get it in both the lines. Yeah. But I'm within a foot, foot and a half. You know, if nobody back there spotting me, it's a very clear camera. The lines show you where you got to stop at, where you need to get to. So it does take a little bit of practice. You know, a disclaimer, I was a, a lot, lot guy, so I drove these around every day for uh, about eight months. Um, so, so I did get pretty used to it doing that, but once you've done it, it's like riding a bike. Once you've done it a little while, it's easy to pick up. It's not something that you'll forget. Um, Charles is asking how big is the tank and what the gas mileage is uh, like. Yep, so, you know, people don't buy these for the gas mileage, that's for sure. Uh, realistically, you're probably going to be getting anywhere from uh, 6 to 9 miles per gallon, depending on, you know, uh, the, the terrain you're driving in, uh, depending on if you're towing something behind you. And the fuel tank on this, good question, I believe it is in the 70 to... 70 gallon range uh, for the fuel tank. Um, I will have all those specs. Uh, I do have a brochure with me uh, with all of those specs for the fresh gray, black, and the fuel tank uh, that we can take a look at once we get back. What would you say to someone trying to decide between a diesel and a gas class A? Okay, that's, that's a question I get very often. Um, you know, I, I would say it really depends on, on how you're going to be using it. Uh, if it's something where you're doing more local trips and, you, you know, you're not going to be towing anything, uh, you're not traveling cross country, you know, a, a gas um, such as this is going to have no issue. Um, if you are, you know, there are some definite benefits to moving up to a diesel. It's a little bit quieter, you got a lot more torque. Um, a lot more pulling power. Um, it's, it's overall, I'd say, a more comfortable driving experience. Um, but with that being said, you're also saving quite a bit uh, on the, going with the gas coach than, than going up to a diesel. Uh, good question. about Coachman that make them uh, fairly unique just as we're driving along here. Uh, two inch thick sidewalls and in the lamination process of their sidewalls uh, there's two, two different techniques that you can do. There's pinch rolling which is pretty much a, a big roller arm flattens out the glue uh, to, to get the sidewall completely laminated. Uh, that's step number, that, that's one process. There is also vacuum bonding, which is pretty much the sidewall goes into a, a machine that sucks out all of the air and compresses the sidewall. Um, Coachman does both. They do both. They're the only manufacturer I know of that pinch rolls and vacuum binds their sidewall to really get rid of a lot of the, uh, you know, if you've ever seen an RV with bubbly sidewalls, um, you know, they have waves in them, that's delamination, and it's from the glue letting loose. You don't see that a lot on Coachman because they really overbuild their sidewalls. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great process. I've been there. I've seen it happen. Uh, and that's something they do on all of their sidewalls. So fuel capacity is actually 80. 80? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 80 gallon fuel capacity. You're not going to have to pull over every two hours to fuel up. You know, it'll cost a decent bit when you do, but. Um, you can you can get uh, get going, travel you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles before, uh, before you need to stop and, and, uh, and get fuel. And again, right now we're cruising along at about 52, 53 miles an hour. It's very well insulated. Coachman does a great job 
um, insulating your engine noise from the cockpit. You know, hopefully you can still hear me, but uh, it's, it's not extremely loud here comparatively to a lot of other gas coaches. It's a very comfortable drive. Um, another thing I hadn't pointed out yet is the lack of carpet. So if you look all around here, I do have a floor mat up front here. Um, but if you look towards the back, there's really no carpet in this coach, uh, meaning cleaning it is going to be a lot easier. Uh, hold up longer on a rainy day like today, you don't have to worry about getting uh, carpet wet. up immediately and really when you're making a turn you know if you're still getting used to it you can judge where the curb is where the lines are um, and, and judge it off of you know looking if you're getting too close to a curb as you're making a turn you just straighten the wheel out a little bit go a little further out and then cut it back again uh, but very very nice to have side view rear view cameras that operate all the time and then what'll, what'll happen you'll see that I just shut the blinker off in another second or two the rear view will turn back on um, so that I get that view of behind me uh, going down the road, should be just a second. Yep. One, one important tip I would say to anybody driving a Class A motorhome, um, especially in windy conditions, is don't oversteer it. What I mean by that is you don't want to hold on for hold on very tight and, and, and turn the wheel um, too much. It's not going to help anything. Um, you got to want to be relaxed and, and just not oversteer. Um, it's a tip that I picked up and it definitely makes a difference. You know, it'll help uh, help you keeping a comfortable drive going down the road. As far as the Marauders go, do we have uh, smaller, bigger floor plans people would, if someone wanted something bigger than this? Yep. Or so smaller? this is, uh, on the Marauder, <clears throat> on the Marauder line, this is the smallest of the floor plans. Uh, it does go all the way up to uh, 35 foot, um, so you can, you know, you can move up six, six feet or so um, and get very similar features and everything, you know, they build them all the same with all uh, feature wise for the most part um, no matter if you're talking about the smaller one or the bigger one but there are different options uh, again anywhere from 29 which is the one we're in up to 35 36 the reason that we chose this one uh, to, to show today is again you know a lot of folks are going to state state campgrounds national campgrounds and state parks um, and a lot of those parks have 31 foot limits for, for, for a majority of their spots. So on something like this, you're getting all of the living space uh, to be comfortable while also staying at a length where you can get into most any campground uh, with no issue.
think if uh, anybody has any more questions, I think we're uh, ready to wrap it up. Sounds good. Anybody yeah. have any more questions, um, you can always comment them, and I think this will get posted. Uh, if you could please like and share this video if you've enjoyed it, it would help us out. Um, again, we're trying to do this with the times of things going on right now. Uh, stay in front of you guys. So again, if you could like and share the video, I'd appreciate it. You know, that way, uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, a lot of folks get to see it. And again, any questions, please comment them, and we'll be sure to get back to you. And what's tomorrow? We got tomorrow's uh, uh, travel trailer. Tuesday, Tuesday, Trailer Tuesday, yeah. Tra trailer Tuesday, so we'll be coming back to you live uh, again tomorrow. Oh, uh, Charles is asking any outside amenities, tables, etc. Okay, so this <clears throat> has an outside entertainment and an outside kitchen as well as outside speakers. Uh, it does not have uh, a standalone table with the coach. There are plenty of spaces to store one. Um, but outside kitchen, outside television, and outside speakers is what this has. As well, of course, the power awning. Uh, the, the power awning and the propane quick connect. So, you know, if you have a, an RV grill, portable grill that you bring along with you, the propane line is already run for you to plug it in and use it. And that's right under the kitchen compartment. And it's right, right under the outside kitchen, yes. Okay. Outside shower as well, um, as well as a sink on the outside. That, that all ties into the mini fridge, or to the outside kitchen that also includes a mini fridge too. Thank you, Charles. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap it up. Thank yes. you, Zach. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you have a great day.